Good morning everyone, it's Yvonne back to do your bonus read. We're going to use the Ethereal Tarot for your reading, for your bonus reading. It's got the what's cracking reading has got me a bit. I did, it's really funny sometimes when I start reading, I think, Where is you know, where is spirit taking me? Where is the universe wanting me to go here? What direction am I going in? And it really just was such an incredible reading, and the power of it is still sitting with me. Um, it raised so many beautiful emotions within me. Um, just amazing. I'm so grateful to have this. I don't want to call it a responsibility because it doesn't feel like a something that I have to feel great responsibility for. I just feel connected, really connected to it all. All right, let's see where we're going with this. Oh, I feel like we're going to get a repeat read here. But anyway, we'll go with it. So we have the Strength card coming out. The beautiful sign of Leo. The Strength card talks about taming your demons in basic. What it really means is that you are taking the time here to build your own strength. And the way you build your strength is by blending every part of you into a complete whole self. Because there are parts of us we put away in our shadow side, not necessarily, I mean, some of that can be because you put yourself behind a mask. Maybe there are parts of yourself you're ashamed of or somebody's told you to be ashamed of them or you've been taught to be ashamed of them. So you put them aside and you hide them away. And sometimes it can be very, very simple. But I know Brené Brown always says that if you hide a part of yourself away, it's hiding lots of yourself away because it just can't be alone. Now, it may be, for example, that, um, you know, you've been told you're overconfident. Somebody's felt uncomfortable with your confidence. Somebody felt really threatened by you, but you didn't see it that way. You went, OK, I, know I can't act that way anymore because it makes people feel uncomfortable. And sometimes we're told that as a small child. So we don't see the ramifications of that until we get older. And then we become scared of taking risks or we get scared of going out into the world because we're scared that we do the wrong thing or we're scared we embarrass people or shame people. So it becomes such a huge thing for us and it damages our self-esteem. That is the ego component of who you are. And the ego is only trying to keep you safe. It's a safety mechanism. So when we, we pretend or we subconsciously pretend to be something we're not, we're hiding away a very important part of ourselves. And in the strength card, the strength card tells us to blend the dark with the light. It's about us understanding those things that have held us back and being prepared to bring them back into ourselves again and make ourselves complete and whole. And that's what the strength card is saying. Okay, we're on a journey here with the Hermit. Now the Hermit is a card that tells us it's the card of Virgo. It talks about taking time out to examine ourselves from a very deep level. And I've got the song going in my head, um, the Turning Japanese song. Um, going in my head here because I always love the line where it says I want my doctor to take a picture so I can look at you from inside as well which for me is just the you know the the ultimate in love isn't it like wanting to know everything about someone the hermit card really is you doing that with yourself really studying here this shadow really studying these parts of you that you've hidden away from the world here with the hermit card so you're definitely on a job. <laughs> Look at this. This is absolutely beautiful. I'm using another deck too, by the way. And we have three major arcanas coming here. So the message is very, very strong this morning. The justice card talks obviously about justice. Now this can be about, you know, um, it, this could even relate to this. You could be fighting for something in a court here. And it could be something to do with um, something that's happened to you that is a, a result of you perhaps stepping back and not standing up for yourself. So the justice card is very much putting things right if it's a legal justice. 
But here I feel like it's really rever re revealing some sort of karmic energy that you've been carrying around with you. Now, when we're brought to the planet and we're incarnated, we are wiped of all previous memories. So we have no memory of where we've come from or our past lives or whatever else. Now, some children, and it's really interesting, most of us remember some of those things as a child. Um, perhaps people don't listen to us. I don't really know why we can't retain it. Maybe because we don't understand things until we're around about eight years old and we develop what we call cognition. But there is an energy of children sometimes bringing those things across and it's documented. I've seen some beautiful stories and I have my own story because my son, I was very poor. I was a single parent for many years and, and things were expensive, much more expensive in those days than what they are now. Um, and I bought my son a teddy bear and on Christmas morning, he opened the Christmas present and he looked at the teddy bear and he said, Scott, where have you been? I've been waiting for you. Um, and I've never forgotten that. So I don't even know where he got the name from. It was bizarre. It was a bizarre thing at the time. I understand it more now. So the justice card here is sort of talking about all that karmic energy, all the stuff that needs to be put right, all these karmic cycles that we're all traveling through. We are meant to complete a lot of that in this lifetime. There is a real strong push for us to move through this lifetime and complete a lot of stuff that we've bought with us from previous lifetimes. There we go. So we have the Six of Swords. So here you are, lessons learned, in your boat, moving forward, moving from treacherous, treacherous waters here into calm waters and letting the past go. So I feel like whatever you're doing here and then the sun shines. So very much this energy of moving away from things, moving away from things on your karmic journey that have probably held you back. And I've just realized I'm shuffling the cards, which is something I never do after I've done the mini read. So I don't know why they've got me doing that this morning. Um, and moving into a new time. So you're off on your boat. You know, you've learned your lessons. You've completed a karmic cycle here. Whatever it was for you that was hidden away within yourself, you're starting to discover who you are at a much deeper level and you're ready to go on your journey. Let's see what's going on. Oh, the strength card still came out here. It's very different though. So what we do have here is some sort of decision needs to be made now because you're closing out the cycle. So maybe the decision here is learning which direction to go in. Maybe you're sort of on the fence here a little bit on now where, where is the journey taking me? Where do I go now? I've done this. Mm. Definitely finishing out something. Ten of Wands coming through. This burden is becoming too much to carry. It's too much for you to carry. You know... I see this sometimes when people are carrying around a lot of emotion, a lot of emotion that doesn't belong to them. Um, we do that sometimes as empaths. We go around collecting other people's energies. <laughs> we think that's okay because we don't really know what we're doing. All we know is that somehow or another we've been picking up um, negative energies as we've been going here. So there's definitely a feeling here of needing to put something down needing to put something down. Seven of Swords, self-sabotage, the star, destiny, Ten of Pentacles, abundance. Sometimes you put the cards down and you realize that, you realize that there's a whole story in front of you here. This happens sometimes. I can put four cards down and get, I can put three cards down and get a complete story. I could probably get a lot from one, but I can get a complete story from four. And this is about putting your burdens down and allowing these things and the ways you've done things in the past to go, because you're not you're not using this this sort of energy anymore, this avoidant energy. It's no good to you. If you've been avoidant in relationships, if you've been avoidant about things in your life, avoidant, um, avoiding things like conflict, the universe is saying now it's time to put all this down. Whatever you've been carrying around here that's not serving you, it's time to let it go because you're moving towards your destiny here which will result in great abundance for you. That is the story I have in front of me. Straightforward, very straightforward. Five of Wands. There is a feeling here of self-deception. So maybe for some of you this is about 
you know, really not being able to see what you've been doing in the past and now that's coming to light. Because there's a very strong feeling here that you're going to be moving in a slightly different direction. And it's not that that direction was never there, but you are now ready to take that, that path. You're ready to move in that direction. Nine of Cups. So what I'm seeing here is in order to make your dreams come true, in order to receive your abundance, in order to see the results of your hard work, there is a, some direction you now need to move towards that's going to bring those things in for you. But the path was blocked before. The path was blocked, but it was blocked with your own energy. So if you're carrying around the energy of other people or other people's emotions or other people's pains and sufferings, you're actually blocking the way for your own wishes. And now you're moving in another direction. So you're letting go of this conflict. Whatever this conflict is for you, you're letting it go here. All right, so we have the Nine of Swords, Anxiety, the Page of Pentacles. The universe is showing you the way here. The universe is showing you the way forward. So this is time for you to really open your eyes here. The Nine of Cups and the Star card, both of them talk about moving towards your destiny, moving towards what is rightfully yours. Your There is a word for it. Because we have the Ten of Pentacles here, which is about abundance. Like moving towards your birthright. Okay, all right, now I'm getting it. So the universe is saying to you here, when you come to the planet, when you're born on the planet, you have a right to everything that is for you on your path. You have a right to that. But what you do along the way is you adopt other people's energies, you adopt other people's ideas, you adopt other people's way of thinking because you come to this planet as an empath. So everybody has a brand new slate and everything is wiped clean. And then you start again. So you start to learn again and you don't remember what has gone in the past or in your past lives. And you start to adopt things because you forget who you are. Because when you're cleared of that, that energy, you don't remember anything. So you get to start all over again. And what you have to recognize in this lifetime is your own self. You have to wake up. You have to awaken to who you are. And you have to let go of all those things that don't belong to you. We need to drop the masks. We need to drop these energies. We need to complete that cycle so that we can move into this birthright of what, what we are meant to have in our life and what belongs with us. And there is an energy here that this is what where you are in the process. A lot of you may not be completely where I'm seeing today, but it's coming. And what I see is that you are letting go of some sort of self-destructive behavior here. You are letting something go because you're realizing here who you are. You're realizing this energy with the star. You're realizing your destiny. And you're turning your back here on this destructive behavior. Now, when I say destructive, for some of you, it could be destructive in a very harsh way. But for others of you, this may be something that you're just starting to realize or starting to understand here because you're feeling this, this energy. You're starting to understand what this energy means. It's destructive for you. It holds you back from your birthright. It holds you back from your abundance. It holds you back from your wishes and it holds you back from what you were entitled to have in this lifetime. But the universe is about to show you something here. The universe is about to gift you with some sort of knowledge here, some sort of opportunity that's coming through. And they showed me this opportunity the other day in the Seven of Pentacles. And what you've been fearing, what you were feeling you weren't getting, what you were fearing wasn't for you on your path, 
once you move in this new direction it will be given to you this abundance but there's definitely this sort of energy needing to give something up to let something go to let it this self-destructive behavior has to go you've carried it around for too long and this may not all be yours this may be other people's stuff you know your parents your grandparents your family your friends you may be carrying around all of their pain and suffering because as an empath you absorb this energy very very strong here but I feel like here you're learning to let go of this self-doubt this conflict within you that makes you doubt who you are all right let's have a look at an oracle card and see what the universe has for us here Oh my goodness, I can't believe this. I cannot believe this. I've got the card of Pleiades out again. There is something in this card that I need to bring to you here. This is your double mission, channeling and uplifting humanity. And this is about loving yourself first. And then if everybody were to do that, we would all be in the same energy. But of course there are people who aren't on this path with you. But you have the responsibility of uplifting the universe here. But it came up in the What's Cracking reading and I'm pretty sure it came up yesterday too. So we're getting a long, a long message coming through here that Spirit is trying to get us to see. Now this is about empaths here with the Get Grounded. So that too resonates with the reading very, very strongly. So let me just read this to you because I feel like all empaths need to use this. I don't know why as empaths we feel like we need to, to take on everybody's pain, but it's something here that teaches us. It's to teach us um, how to work only with our own energy. Get grounded, 66. Empaths, highly sensitive connect with nature. I always say this is the time to take your shoes off and go and walk in the grass. You are being called to get grounded, to ensure that your luminous field is clear and your inner well is full. If you're not grounded, it's all too easy to get swept up in other people's energy and mistake it for your own. Your boundaries will become blurred as you are absorbing the energies around you and struggling to define what is their stuff and what is yours. If you pulled this card, you are very likely an empath or a highly sensitive person and need time alone to fill up your well, balance your energy and get grounded. There are two types of people, those who draw their energy from others and those who draw their energy from within. Reflect on which one you are and carve out time each day to ensure your well is being replenished. Being sensitive is a superpower, but like all powers, it needs to be nurtured in order to be fulfilled. It is easy to get swept up in the high frequency energies that are swirling around the planet. The quickest and most effective way of clearing all this from your field is to ground yourself by connecting with Mother Earth. There are many ways to get grounded. One of the most powerful ones is to practice earthing by connecting to the power of Mother Earth. Spend time in nature, put your hands on a tree, your palms are extensions of your heart chakra, or walk barefoot on the earth, and that's the one I always find the best is taking your shoes off and actually walking outside. You can do it inside too. It still grounds you. But that when you get in touch, like really in touch with the soil or the dirt, that's when you feel really grounded to the universe. I'll leave you with that. Thank you.